Before I start this, if you already know what a SID is, then you really shouldn't be watching this video. Go watch one of my others. Hey guys, hope you're all well, it's Matt here, and uh, I apologise for the lack of videos recently. I've been pretty busy with other things, i.e. World Flight, and a few IRL things that have been keeping me busy. Not to worry though, I am back. And today we are going to be doing something pretty short, not one of my usual 30-40 minute videos. This is probably going to take maybe two or three circa, not very much more than that. Um, how to select a SID. I am going to assume that you know how to get a route, and if you don't know how to get a route, watch some of my other videos. They show you how to get routes, or just go on YouTube or Google. So today, what is a SID? A SID is a standard instrument departure. And it is literally what it says. It's using instruments, and it's a departure, and it's a standardized one. So it is a routing out of a airfield which follows specific waypoints and specific turns and climbs and all that good stuff, which, when airspace is congested, makes it ridiculously streamlined and easy for controllers to manage. SIDs aren't anything to be scared of, it is literally just reading a chart and understanding what the chart is saying, and then flying the SID. Today I've got three examples for you. I've got three flight plans, or the start of three flight plans, so please don't use these for your flight planning. This is Heathrow to Boston, this is Boston to Heathrow, and this is Los Angeles to Luxembourg. Now, I'm going to show you how to select the SID for each of these flight plans. So. We need to find some charts first of all. I have a Navigraph subscription to the cloud data chart cloud thing. It's fantastic. It's 60 odd euros a year um, and you get all of the charts included in one nice little web application. Uh, you can also view it on your tablet or on your phone. So you need to log into it uh, or just source the charts yourself. You don't have to use this but this is what I'm using for ease. The first flight plan is out of uh, Heathrow, Heathrow to Boston. So we're going to go and we're going to find Heathrow, so United Kingdom it's in. And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for LHR, London Heathrow, there we go. We are after SIDS, so let's just untick everything and then we've got all this. So, the route states that we are going at a ground speed of 491 knots, initially up to flight level 360. Now really we could get rid of that if you're just trying to do basic route planning. That's, that was just because I pulled it from a real world source. Um, the very first waypoint or very first fix is the important bit. Uh, in this example it's Charlie Papatango. Now Charlie Papatango at face value if you didn't know any departures from Heathrow would be called Charlie Papatango and controllers and pilots alike I have heard them call it Charlie Papatango. I will tell you now though, because I know, it's called Compton, and it's just out to the west of Heathrow. Now if we look on this list of, of SIDs, we can see that kind of a third of the way down is a bunch of Compton departures. Now you need to go and find the runway yourself of what runway you're departing off. So uh, once you've done that, then you just literally reference back to the chart based on the runway. So let's say, for example, we're going off runway 27 left. We'll click on the departure chart, which is SID runway 27 left right. This will load up the chart. As you can see, this is a Compton departure. There's a Charlie Papatango right there. And you have two departures or two SIDs based on the runway. So from 27 left, Compton 3 Golf, and 27 right, Compton 3 Foxtrot. We are interested in the one on 27 left, so it is really simple for, for Compton departures. You fly straight ahead to 7 DME from London, which is 113.6. Then you turn left, heading 270 and fly to Woodley. And then from Woodley, you intercept a 282 degree radial inbound to Compton. And the initial climb is 6,000 feet. If you want any tips on flying SIDs, if there's enough demand, I may make a video on how to do it properly. So, that's that. Moving on to the next example. Boston. Now the states work slightly differently than Europe uh, as far as SIDs go. So we need to go and find uh, the Boston chart. So they're in the United States of America. And then here's Boston. Now our first fix or waypoint is, I'm guessing this is called Lobster because they have 
funky names over there. So LBSTA, lobster, maybe. We'll go with lobster. If it's not, I'm going to look like an idiot, but whatever. Uh, so f again, ignoring the, the ground speed and the flight level, lobster being the first waypoint. So we look down the chart. Actually, first of all, let's filter it by SIDS. We look down the chart and we can see here lobster 3. Now, because America is so great, they have a Lobster 3 off every single runway. So it doesn't even matter which runway you're using. Um, the Lobster 3 applies to every single runway. So, for example, if we went off runway 15 right, I don't know, just picking one, then you would climb on 151, uh, 151 degrees, and then you would intercept a 132 degree uh let's see yeah we would we turn left to one three two degrees to fox and then left heading zero nine two to boat and then up to here and then up to sean you get the point you can see what i'm doing uh so that's how you pick it for that airfield last example and i apologize i'm flying through these things ridiculously quickly but time is of the essence is los angeles to luxembourg so we need to go back and we need to find LAX. Okay, sorry, so after endless scrolling and becoming blind temporarily, uh, I found the Los Angeles charts. Um, I filtered them by uh, SIDS, which is what we need. And if we look back at our flight plan, the very first waypoint on this flight plan is Delta Alpha Golf. D-A-G. Forget the ground speed and forget the flight level. So DAG, Delta Alpha Golf. Now if we look down this list, I cannot see anywhere the DAG departure. This is where people get stuck. Why do you have to overcomplicate things? So we look down the list and uh, I'm just going to pick one at random. So forget all these RNAV things. Uh, let's find, here we go, the Chatty 2. Is it there? Can we see DAG on this? No, we can't, because, I mean, to be honest, this is all going out to the north and the northwest, and we're going this way to the east and northeast, so it's not that. So let's try this one, the Gabra, or Gaber 7. Here we go, DAG, Daggett, great. Let me, uh, let me rotate this so you can see it. That was the wrong way. Why, is it, why does it do that to me? Let's go this way. Nope, that's upside down this way great okay cool so if you're using runway 06 or 07 left and right uh, that's 06 left and right and 07 left and right by the way um, you are going to be flying the Gaber 7 departure with a Daggett transition okay really simple so let's say we're taking runway 06 left, climb on heading 070 and then 3DME from Los Angeles, turn left heading 055 for radar vectors uh, to the radial of 345 to Sierra Lima, India. Now, Sierra Lima, India is here, 115.7. So what they'll be doing really is taking you out 070, turning you left 055 and then taking you in this area here so you can intercept this northerly radial. Uh, and it's not an inbound radial, I just said it was inbound, it's actually an outbound radial of Seal Beach, so it's northerly. And then from that we head to Gaber, and then we turn right to Fog X, and then up to Daggett. So that is how you would choose it for that runway. Now let's say we wanted to go off a different runway, now we have to look again for a different departure. So let's have a look at the LAX-6 departure. Does that go by Daggett? No it doesn't, that goes to the southeast, we do not want that. Let us try the Perch 9. Nope, it doesn't go that way either. Uh, actually, I missed one here. Let's try this one. The Loop 6. Ah, here we go. The Loop 6. So this is the one for the other runway. This uh, is the Loop 6 runway. 2, 4 left, 2, 4 right, and 2, 5 left, and 2, 5 right. We should have picked that up really from the title of it because, you know, it had 2, 4 left, 2, 5 left, and right in the, uh, in the description. I just loaded the chart twice because I'm a genius. So same here. Let's say we're taking off 24 left. Climb on 250 across the radial of Santa Monica. Uh, and then turn left. Uh, oh no, what am I talking about? Climb on 250 degrees, which is what we do. Okay. 
across the radial of 160 from Santa Monica, which is here, and then is radar vectors to Los Angeles, so they'll probably turn as left or right. Okay, they go, expect left turn direct to Los Angeles, and then via the dagger transition. So you'll be going out and left all the way back around and then this way. If there's no ATC, if you don't use VATSIM, um, I strongly recommend you do, but if you don't and you're flying offline, if you don't use default ATC, then all I'd do is once you pass this radial of 160, just swing it left to, to LA and then back out to Daggett. Simple. So, I really hope that that's helped you. I know it's, uh, let's see how many minutes this is. I don't like long videos. 13 minutes, are you serious? I wanted it to be like two. Oh well, my bad. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you found something of use from it. And if you didn't, I'm sorry. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe. I never say this and I don't know why. I was looking through all my other videos and I never promote myself on YouTube. I'm making videos but I don't promote my... whatever. Okay, there's a subscribe button there somewhere. If you like what you see, please hit it. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. I don't mind. Um, also, head over to Facebook and Twitter and you'll be able to see some more stuffs over there. It's the best way to get in contact with me because, you know, YouTube and its new comment system has destroyed any sort of humanity. Until next time, thanks for watching and take care all. Bye-bye.